Hey, Craig. Hello, everybody. Hi, I'm Luke from Cosmic Archaeology. Um, I'm here as the chair of the FAME Health and Safety Group. Sorry, I'll try and speak up. Um, so yeah, I'm here as the chair of the Health and Safety Group, and I'm tackling the wonderful joy that is CSCS. Um, so today's presentation is entitled Changes to CSCS, Update to Planning and Port Way Forward, or as I'm thinking of it, there and back again, a CSCS tail. Um, I have been told by Kenneth that I'm not allowed to be the funny health and safety guy, so I'll try to keep jokes to an absolute minimum. Um, but apologies, I couldn't resist coming up with an exciting CSCS card for the front cover. Um, for those of you eagle-eyed enough, you'll spot that the uh, withdrawal date for the card is the withdrawal date for all CSCS cards for archaeologists. So, before we go to where we're going, quick recap, how did we get here? January 2024, CSCS announced they plan to withdraw CSCS cards for archaeologists from 1st of May. Yay! Thanks, guys. Um, for those of you who were at the uh, AGM last night, uh, we were not consulted. Um, so this came as quite a shock to us when we discovered this. Um, there was a bit of toing and throwing, and I'm not going to go through all of that toing and throwing, because, to be honest, it's quite boring. Um, but there was a bit of toing and throwing, and what turned out to be the case was that the cards that we already have, that are in date, would continue to be valid until they expired. And any cards renewed or gained before first May cutoff would continue to be valid until their end date. So effectively, from the 1st of May this year, we have a five year before nobody in archaeology has a CSS card. So why were the cards withdrawn? Um, this is part of the ongoing process that Build UK, CSCS and others within their area have um, timed up on the way that people qualify. This has been ongoing for years and years. Um, it is not just the archaeologists that are affected by this. Um, this includes uh, the security people on sites and various other different sectors that get involved as well. One of the reasons they cite was overcarding, too many people getting cards for horror. Um, archaeology is not a construction activity, and not construction related. Um, we may question that. Um, archaeologists are not holding construction qualifications. Again, something that shouldn't be a surprise to anybody in this room. Um, and confusions over the AQP cards, the academically qualified people. A professional, sorry. So in other words, they would take the title of your degree certificate as your job title and what you were. And of course, as we all know, universities come up with any number of weird and wonderful names for their archaeology degrees. So, the effect on commercial archaeology, savings at a cost. Um, I think I'd be right in saying that among our sector, when we were first told this, the initial reaction of many people was um, to click their heels and go, yippee, that's £70 a time that I don't have to spend. That's training that I don't have to give to archaeologists that I don't know we need anymore. Um, and all the rest of the exciting things we don't have to do. However, the cost for many commercial units, this instantly means that we have trouble tendering work. We can no longer meet the requirements of the accreditations that we all have, whether that's whichever ones you have, it might be SMAS, CHAS, Safe Contractor, whoever it is, your SSIPs, um, it may impact on some of your ISO qualifications, all this sort of stuff. It may then mean that your staff have to go through various other training programs, and that might be specific site to site. So contractor A wants you to have this before you're allowed on site, contractor B wants you to have that to go on site. And we're back to the situation we were in, say about a decade ago, where all of us, when told, can I see your cards, would have the classic sort of comedy, hold it up and it drops out and there's a, a roll of the things, um, somewhere that none of us really want to go. Or indeed, we get to site and the chap on site turns around and says, 
you're not coming onto my site. This site is 100% carded. And while CITB and CSCS will argue that that is not what is supposed to happen, that is very much what happens. So I'm going to very briefly go through the steps that have happened since then. Um, first one, which I haven't included on this, was panic. Oh my goodness, what do we do? Um, this quickly became an extraordinary meeting of the Fame Health and Safety Group, um, as well as quite a lot of quite um, heated phone calls between myself and colleagues across the sector. Um, at that point, we had no route forward. We were looking at all the alternatives. Um, we even started going down the routes of, could we come up with our own archaeology card system? Um, within fame, anyway, we certainly talked about that. And other people had other ideas. Well, we can do this, we can do that. There was a bit of a scramble for people to get all of their staff through cards to renew cards early. Um, and try and get them all through so at least we've got five years and hopefully this will all wash over. Um, some people also chose to go, okay, they say that we don't need them, we don't need them. And we'll say that when we go to site. All of this culminated in National Highways rearing their heads um, and just turning around going, oh, this is a thing, this is now starting to impact our site. And they called a meeting. So on the 17th of April, I went to one of the most cross-sector meetings I've ever been to in my life, attended by the most representatives. Um, that included Fame, CIFA, Prospect, Alga, representatives of a broad spectrum. The consultancies, the multidisciplinaries, the, the digging units, if you will, the, from the very small to the very big. And this is why I say there and back again. Because the main takeaway from this, and I'm not going to go over all the stuff we talked about because we went round in circles for literally hours. And every time we'd finished, we'd go round in circles and somebody would bring up part of the past again and how we got to it. But the main takeaway from this was that the representatives from CFCS, including one of their auditors, turned around and said, well, no, there, are, there is a way you could have cards. We could review this. There are possibilities which personally was a bit of a, uh, a revelation, a moment for me. All of a sudden, everything I've been thinking about for the past few months at this point has been thrown out the window. Um, and so we moved on from there. So we formed a group um, representing those disparate different bodies, um, including specifically Fame and Sifa to work on this. And I had the luck to be pointed out when they said somebody needs to chair that one as well. Um, I've been very quiet all day, so I'm not quite sure how that happened, but never mind. So, since then we have been working, we've met three, four, five times, not really sure, and discussed this and the ways forward. And what we want to do specifically is we want to build an argument to present to CSCS Build UK as to why we should have cards. But that's only one of the options. So, the way forward, your options. I've given you all of the options, one of them doesn't exist though. So, first option, no cards needed. We muddle along, different units do their own things, some, and that may work for a lot of people. A lot of people don't work on CDM sites. A lot of people don't uh, do a lot of sort of pre-planning work, where they don't need any stuff. They're in a field in the middle of nowhere, whatever, and they can muddle along without cards, and that's great. Um, some people definitely will need this, but they can go down a different route. They can get different qualifications. We can get this, we can get that, and we can do that for every different site. So we could go for no cards needed. The next option is parallel carding. In other words. Well, that card is the uh, Interpretario Romano. So this card looks a bit like this card, so we'll have this one now. Um, and this is where people have started, and I've heard this happening already, archaeologists are trying to get labouring cards um, and various other different ones. And then, indeed, some people within our sector 
do qualify for different cards anyway. For example, those who are lucky enough to have a health and safety qualification you can get one by your health and safety qualifications. If you have geomatics survey staff, they can get a, I think it's a gold card through their qualifications if they've done um, that's one, two, three, I think it is. Um, that works to a point. However, it somewhat devalues the card and our profession. Um, and that's the important thing to talk about here. CSCS card for us means three things. There is our professional standing. And that's what gives us credit, clout with the sector. There is the health and safety bit, which is the bit everybody thinks the card is about. It's one part of it, not the main part of it, but on site that is the main part. That's why we have them on site, is to get on to sites. And the final bit there is it is de facto ID card in the construction industry. And while that may have no legal standing whatsoever, it's still an important thing. And that's still the thing that they will record at the inductions. So it's useful for people. So parallel carding doesn't sound like a good idea. The academically qualified person, I've left it on there, a uh, slightly updated version is that I haven't given Doug, but I took that one off. But we'll leave it there anyway. This is the idea that you get your card through your degree. That is truly buried. We can't go there. It's, it's not going to work for anybody anymore. Um, so though it's something we've all used in the past, it's not going to work. So we could reopen the professionally qualified person route. This is for C for members. Um, your membership, your test, you get a CSCS card. It's an option that we could present and CSCS, CITB, Build UK may go for that. And then the final one, big scary one on the list, the CSCS Archaeology Alliance Scheme. So one thing we've looked at is what other sectors have done. So if we take um, the UXO industry, or indeed um, the, uh, the groundworks, uh, groundwork, sorry, the ecology, or that sort of the barley and the like, they have an alliance scheme, which means that they run it themselves, which means that they set standards within themselves aligned with CSCS, and through that they can issue a card, which is then badged by CSCS, approved by CSCS. So this is the same as all those other cards that we've all got, various different things which also have a CSCS badge on it. As an example, um, anybody who does a uh, cable avoidance tool, Captain Jenny card through the USR, that is badged with CSCS, so it's a similar sort of thing. That would give us the option eventually to set our own standards to, as an industry, decide what we want to do with our card and to show our professional standing, our professional qualifications, show that we have our health and safety aligned with what we want to do. In other words, anybody who's done the managers and professionals test, um, who didn't enjoy all of the regulation stuff to do with the construction industry that has nothing to do with us, hopefully we could remove some of that. Um, I'm not going to nail my colours to the mast here and now, that is for us as a sector, as fame, as CEPA to decide. Um, I'm sure we'll discuss that in a moment. So, next steps. We've been building up our arguments as a group, we've been collecting data as a group, we've been putting together why we should still be included, justifying why so that when we present it to CSS, we have a bulletproof argument. So our next step is for the working group to get approval from Fame's board, from CIFA's board, and then to meet, get approval to meet with Build UK, with CSS, present our arguments, and explore with them the routes available. Um, and of course we will date you all as we go through that process. The full disclosure on this and the thing that I have to come back to is we can meet with them, we can give our arguments, we could suggest that we would like to explore an alliance scheme or a reopen PQP route. 
um, or parallel carding. There's no guarantee that any of these will be accepted, but they will say, yeah, sure, go along with that. The alliance scheme we think has got the most weight and is the most benefit to everybody, and also that kind of starts to cut out some of the people who would not, the, the construction industry that we don't want to get involved with, but will keep that professional standing for us. So my final words before we get to the discussion then, a little bit of homework for everybody. Um, for those of you that haven't already, you will have seen, hopefully, those of you, the ROs, we've seen C sending out um, surveys asking if you've had any interactions, if you've had problems, or indeed if you haven't had problems, if, if in your company it's all fine. It's running long, we don't see CSCS, the lack of it hasn't affected us at all. Great, we would like to hear that as well. They've sent those surveys out. Please, 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 if you haven't already, can you complete them, get them back. There is now a link for people who are not ROs, organisations that aren't ROs. Feedback as well. The more feedback we get from cross sector, the more we can hone our argument, we can target where to go with it. So, a little bit of homework.